Well, the smiles continue today for Todd Ritchie. The Sox and the Royals next on WGN. We are coming to you from Comiskey Park, where this afternoon, WGN Sports presents White Sox Baseball. Flags Ordonius, Paul Canerco, the Big Hurt Frank Thomas and the Sox as they get set to host Mike Sweeney, Carlos Beltran, and Tony Pena's Kansas City Royals. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the beautiful city of Chicago, Illinois. With DJ Darren Jackson, I'm Ken Harrelson as we get set to bring you the finale of this four-game set. Sox took the open four to nothing behind John Garland. Then it was Miguel Asensio picking up his first major league victory as Kansas City took game two, three to two. Then last night, 6-1, Gary Glover was just outstanding. So one of the guys we've got to get on a roll, big cog in our rotation, Todd Ritchie today. Well, the staff's been relying on Todd Ritchie all year long to be that number two right behind Mark Burley. Early in the year, he had no problem getting it done. Lately, struggled, lost five in a row. He, it is time for him to get back on track. He has not liked day games. But I think he's got something to prove and it's going to be right here this afternoon. All right, sit back, relax, and strap it down. It'll be Todd Ritchie against the Southpaw, Daryl May, and DJ will be back with the rest of the starting lineups. Chicago White Sox baseball brought to you by Miller Lite. Grab a Miller Lite. It's Miller time. Your local Ford store. Quality people. Quality products. Pepsi. The joy of Pepsi. And by Toyota. Get the feeling. Deep beneath the ocean surface, an underwater expedition has discovered a new form of life. He was undergoing some form of genetic alteration. And unleashed a new kind of terror. It absorbs the intelligence of its victims. <laughs> Starring Richard Crenna and Robocop's Peter Weller. <laughs> Leviathan. Friday at noon Eastern on WGN. I have something to tell you. Are you first? No, you go. I'm not ready to get married. Okay. So, what was your news? I won the lottery. $63 million. Think about it this way, man. After taxes, that's only like $28, $30 million. That's it. Yeah. Life is best told over a great tasting Miller Lite at a place called Miller Time. Shannon? Hey, it's Steve. What's going on? formula knocks out weeds in 24 hours. The leading imitator doesn't. New Roundup Fast Act Foam knocks out weeds in 24 hours. I take batting practice. I take infield practice. I take Viagra. Ready to try Viagra for the first time? Ask your doctor if a free sample's right for you. And visit Viagra.com for more information. Step up to the plate and make an appointment to see your doctor. Welcome back to beautiful Comiskey Park here in Chicago, Illinois. There the weather is starting to change a little bit. Sun's coming out. Nice day here at the ballpark. Sox trying to take the series here. Sending Todd Ritchie out to the hill to get it done. He's going to be going against this lineup right here. Tony Pena starting lineup this afternoon. Perez at shortstop leads things off. Luis Alisea is at second base batting second. In center field Carlos Beltran. Cleanup hitter first baseman Mike Sweeney. Joe Randa is the DH and behind him is the right fielder Mark Quinn. And left field Brandon Berger just called up. Chuck Knobloch placed on the DL with a sore forearm. Doing the catching, A.J. Hinch. And at third base, Donnie Sadler. The joy of Pepsi defense. Rowan, Lofton, Ordonez, the outfield. Graffinino, Clayton, Durham, Kernerko, the infield. The battery of Alomar Jr. and Todd Ritchie. 
Todd's numbers. Three and seven. Four three seventy RA. That in 12 starts. Posting 286 against him. So he's got 40 strikeouts in his 70 innings. 81 hits given up. Eight long balls. 25 walks. Umpires this afternoon. Tim McClellan. Crew chief behind home plate. Chuck Merriweather first. Ted Barrett second. Brian Rungi down at third base. Todd's finished his warm up tosses. Nephew Perez is digging a big deep hole up there in the batter's box. So it's time for Hawk to take it away. All right DJ thank you and once again. Good afternoon everyone and welcome to White Sox baseball right here for WGN Sports. So happy you could join us for the finale of this four game set. Nephew Perez switch hitting shortstop. First pitch of the ball game. One and oh. Perez hitting at 233 a couple of homers he's driven in 19. One for seven lifetime. Off Todd Ritchie. And the count two and oh. Kansas City comes in with that 22 and 34 mark nine and a half games back of Minnesota. They're hitting at 240 as a club with a 5.06 ERA. There's a strike two and one. Just a beautiful day here in the beautiful city of Chicago. Started off a little cloudy this morning and they have disappeared. Supposed to have a gorgeous weekend. Interleague play starting tomorrow. Montreal Expo is coming to town, followed by the Mets. And here's a 2 2 pitch. Here at Comiskey Park, 330 down the left field line, 335 down the right field line, 375 in the gaps, and 400 straight away center field. Nephew Perez. Before becoming a Kansas City Royal, was an outstanding hitter in Colorado. 279 lifetime hitter. The ball hit deep in the right center field. Mags. I think the wind got to that a little bit and knocked it down. Ball looked like it was hitting much better than where it ended up. Doesn't look like a lot of wind, but in this ballpark, you never know. And unfortunately for the outfielders, the flags don't do anything to help. If anything, it's almost a reverse so you could go off that premise. Well that's the experience of the home team. They know it. The visitors don't know it as well. Here's another switch hitter. Second baseman Luis Alisea. Hitting at 171 no homers he's driven in six. Thirty six year old veteran out of Florida State. Count evens at one. This is the seventh meeting of the year between these two ball clubs. In the first six, they have split them. Royals are 10 and 20 on the road this year. Here's a base hit. I'll say doing a nice job going the other direction has not been out there very much this season. But taking advantage of the opportunity shooting at the other direction I'll say has only had 70 at bats prior to that base hit. And here's another switch hitter. first three all switch hitters Carlos Beltran hitting at 268 homers he's driven in 33. He has faced Todd eight times. He has one hit. Now the Royals with a new skipper, Tony Pena. They are nine and eleven. Under Tony. What we've seen in the first three games here, he's gonna he's gonna run them. He's gonna be aggressive. Which you would suspect. Todd's got plenty of time, takes it, makes it. So two out. Beltron. He's trying to force the issue here by getting the butt down. Doesn't put it where he wants to. Back towards the mound, which allows Richie the opportunity to get off and make the easy play. 
Well, here's a cleanup hitter, the first baseman, Mike Sweeney. Mike hitting at 337, nine homers. He's driven in 32. He's faced Todd Ritchie 11 times, and he has one hit. You know, in the years that Tony Muser was there, I think you and I both were in agreement as far as running a ball game. Tony was a good manager. But sometimes in baseball, it just does not work out, obviously. And changes have to be made. Well, you know, managers can get set and used to doing things a certain way, and they've got to be able to make adjustments. Boy, I tell you, DJ, that is so true. You know, especially with today's player. You know, when I first came up, it was everything was etched in stone. You didn't ask why or how even. Because if you asked how, that would indicate that you didn't know what was going on. You just did what you were told. Exactly. You nodded your head up and down and said, yes, sir. If you didn't know, you wouldn't ask somebody a question that you knew he'd give you the right answer, yeah. but not embarrass you <laughs> like one of the other players. But more inquisitive mind in today's game. They want to know why. And then if they don't like it, they'll tell you. Here's the 3-0 pitch. And there's ball four. Sweeney, the one guy in this lineup that you definitely don't want to beat you because he can certainly do that. And he has done that against us many times. Here, Richie was going around him. And here's the DH this afternoon. 32 year old veteran Joe Randa hitting at 297, five homers. He's driven in 31. And you can't let your guard down at all with Randa up there. We've seen him drive in a lot of big runs. Came through a couple of nights back, drove in a run in the sixth inning. Well, he has in the past done a damaging job against the Sox, offensively and defensively, but still, you got to make him beat you more so than Sweeney. Yeah, we talked about that pretty much this whole series. Mike Sweeney's the one main character for the Royals that you've got to be careful with. There's a base hit. So Randa gets the job done, often gets to it, cuts it off, and they're going to hold Sweeney at third on a single, and it's 1 nothing Kansas City. Joe Randa reaping the rewards of the man being out there. As Mike Sweeney didn't get the opportunity, Randa picks him up and does do the job. And that pitch was just out there where he can get his arms extended and just hit a rocket out there in that gap. Well, that's been Todd's problem. The last four or five times out there, he just has not been able to hit his spots. And I don't care who you are, if you can't hit your spots, you're going to run into some problems. Yes, here's the right fielder, Mark Quinn. Quinn at 236, a couple of homers. He's driven in 10. Oh, you just said it. You hit it on the head when you, you mentioned he has been leaving uh, balls over there, over the plate for the guys to hit. Earlier in the year, he was starting this fastball off the outside corner to the right handers and tailing it back and in off the corner. Now he has a tendency to start it on the outside corner and it ends up over the heart of the plate. So he's a little bit off. Two and one the count. There's another area when you're not hitting your spots and you're trying to hit that corner. You're going to fall behind. You're going to be 2 0, 2 1, 3 1, 3 2. That's one thing about Todd all year, though. He has been a guy that can pitch from behind in the count. He's made the pitches when he's had to. Early on, he did. Yes. Well, yeah, that, that goes hand in hand with him not hitting his spots lately leaving balls over the plate but you know even though he has the three and seven record it's a little deceptive earlier in the year he was throwing the ball very well could have won some games and got no run support he has the lowest run support in the starting staff Gwen very aggressive you got Brandon Berger on deck he was just called up 
An example of Todd's bad luck last outing. Eight runs given up, none of them earned. Which is pretty amazing. Lower your ERA when you give up eight. And there's a the base hit. Oranda will pull up and it's 2 0 Kansas City. Well, behind in the count and Quinn just waiting for something just to lay into, and it's right there. You mentioned a very aggressive hitter. You throw anything in the vicinity to him, three and one, he is ready to swing out of his behind and try and crush it. So Nardi Contreras out to talk to him. All is coming with two out and a man on first. The walk to Sweeney, the base hit by Randa, and the base hit by Quinn. So here's Berger. He mentioned he was just recalled. If there is one pitch that I think has gotten tied in trouble as far as in the mind of the hitter he has not been able to establish his curveball to whereas they know he can throw it for a strike. Burger high and that's going to be souvenir because his slider is real close to his sinker and his fastball. So basically in essence if you've been hitting against Todd for the last four or five starts after you see what's going on with him you can just go up there and just sit on that fastball and then still get the slider. Uh, yeah and, and the thing is again even though Todd's got outstanding movement with that fastball it's ending up over the big part of the plate and it appears now the hitters are looking over the heart of the plate against him not on the corners because his controls not been as sharp. Jack Swain that will. That smart hurt. for a little bit. Oh. Wow. Almost like that ball was going to hit him after he started his swing. And he really drilled himself. This is going to really take a minute for him to regroup right off the inside of the knee. That 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 one's a bad area to get hit in. That's a very tender area. And you take it off the shin bone off the top of the foot. Even take him off the thigh, but he got it right in inside that that kneecap. Take one more look at this right here. Ow. When you hit it off the foot, you'll just walk it off a little bit. You know it's gonna hurt. It's going to be real sore the next day. It shoes nice and tight, keeps pressure on it. But that area, uh uh. You know, it's only been the last 10 or 15 years that you've seen a, just an inordinate amount of foul balls going off guys' thighs, knees, shins. Prior to that, almost every time you might get one on the lower part of your shin or on the top of the foot, side of the foot. But you never saw anybody foul a ball off and get themselves in the knee or the thigh. Well, you know what? I, I'd attribute it to more right handers now throwing the two seamer that's sailing in on the right handed hitters a lot more. When I first got to the big leagues, there weren't that many guys that ran them in like that. They were right handers had four seam over the top straight fastballs. Well, they've all been two seamers around, though. Guys that didn't throw hard. Breaking ball two and two. I think the tendency now is hardly anybody wants to throw a baseball straight. How many guys are we going to name on anybody's staff that comes over the top with a straight four straight four seam fastball. Not many. No. Not many at all. Well. The ball just foul. I mean just foul. Yeah, you're talking about a game of inches. Well, this proves it. Well, 
Brian Rungi. With you see authority. Him take his time right there. Yeah, with authority. Sometimes on a shot like that, they'll get directions mixed up and go the other way. Yes, that has happened. Once again, the 2 2. That's in the right field. Mags. He's there, and that'll do it. Royals put a two spot on the board after a half inning of play. It's Kansas City 2, and the good guys coming to bat. Introducing the 240 horsepower four wheel drive pilot built by Honda. Slower traffic, please keep to the right. I'm always thinking something terrible is going to happen. I can't handle it. You know, your worst fears, you know, the what ifs, and I can't control it. And I'm always worrying about everything. It's like a tape in my mind, it just goes over and over and I over. I just over. thought that I was a worrier. It's like I never get a chance to relax. At work, I'm tense about stuff at home. At home, I'm tense about stuff at work. If you're one of the millions of people who live with uncontrollable worry, anxiety, and several of these symptoms for six months or more, you could be suffering from generalized anxiety disorder, and a chemical imbalance could be to blame. Paxil works to correct this imbalance to relieve anxiety. Prescription Paxil is not for everyone. Tell your doctor what medicines you're taking. People taking MAOIs or thyroidazine should not take Paxil. Side effects may include decreased appetite, dry mouth, sweating, nausea, constipation, sexual side effects, tremor, fatigue, or sleepiness. Paxil is non-habit forming. I'm not bogged down by worry anymore. I feel like me again. I feel like myself. It's two to nothing here in the bottom of the first inning. It's time right now to take a look at Jerry Manuel's starting lineup. Brought to you by Pepsi. Top of the order looks like this: Lofton, Durham, and Thomas. And you have Ordonez, Canerco, and Graffinino in the heart of the lineup. But Canerco, his last 11 at bats, close that with Alomar, Rowan, and Clayton. Defense for the Royals: Berger, Beltron, Quinn, Sadler, Perez, Alisea, Sweeney in the infield. Battery of Hinch and May, Daryl May. Has an 0 3 record, 6.43 ERA, constantly 272 against him. Daryl May, the last four seasons, has played baseball in Japan. Two years for the Hanshin Tigers, and the last two for the Yamamori Giants. Well, 29 year old Southpaw, 6'285 pounds, out of Austin, Texas. Get ready to face Kenny Lofton, and before we show you our picks to click, you at home select yours. Kenny hitting at 298. Takes first pitch ball. Kenny with three homers, but he's driven in 27. You see two for seven with those three big ribbies last night. Donnie Sadler in on the grass at third. Outfield spread out and swung around to the left. As the count evens at one. Sox come in at 30 and 29. Three games back in Minnesota. Could there be playing a night game? Hosting the Cleveland Indians. Two and one. Sox hitting at 271 as a club with a 4.53 team ERA. Sox have played well here at home, 19 and 12. And it's three and one. And we are interactive today. So if you want to email us, just jump on. Here's a strike. And if you want to email us, poof, here it is. Email Hawk and DJ, Sox TV at ChicagoSports.com. That's Hawk and DJ, Sox TV at ChicagoSports.com. We'll try to get as many on the air as we can. And there's a way to start it off. You can cancel a post game show. Well, Daryl May has become a strikeout pitcher. He had 19 strikeouts in just 21 innings. But while in Japan, he threw 556 innings and had 540 strikeouts, almost a strikeout per inning. And he's featured a decent fastball, kind of because of his motion, a little hesitation at it, sneaks up on the hitter, a little slurve, also a changeup. 
So here's Ray fakes the button, takes a strike. Sadler, once again in on the grass as there's a bunt. A.J. Hinch played a first base, so a sacrifice, 2 3. So a duck on the pine for Big Frank Thomas. Ray means to push his ball a little bit harder than he does, but he deadens it. But it's a nicely located bunt. Moves Lofton along as Darrell May, very good at holding Kenny Lofton with a slide step, quick to the plate. Big Frank hitting at 259, 11 homers. He's driven in 43. Pretty good rip. Not quite as big as it has been. He's had a big swing going for him. Sure would be something to see Big Frank get that old weight transfer back and be able to drive the ball into right center field seats the way he used to. You just mentioned the operative word there, drive. You don't hit the ball to right field except in certain situational scenarios. You drive the ball to right field if you're a right handed hitter. And there is a huge difference. You know, you can think of maybe Frank's career going in a couple of different chapters earlier on, where he was the guy that can hit it center field, right center field with authority. And then the next chapter was he's turning on stuff. And then get back to that third chapter. Shooting it into right center field and right field with some authority. And the count three and one. So he's in the catbird seat. And the reason anybody such as Frank Thomas, as good as a player as he's been his whole career, would have to think about turning the page, turning the chapters, is because the league's made adjustments to him. Now he's got to make adjustments to them and back and forth and back and forth. And there's ball four. So a two on one out. Let's check out our picks to click this afternoon. Jim Angio, our director and crew, went with Aaron Rowan. Sylvia and DJ going to go with Sandy Alomar and Eddie Verdoliak. And the Mongoose, Frank Farocco, and I are going to go with Royce Clayton. Al Nipper, pitching coach. Well, Darrell May is making his fifth start of the season and his longest outing. Has been six and a third inning. So he's not somebody, I tell you, since Tony Pena has come over, he's kind of trying to see what everybody can do. Well, he's in that look see mode right now. You know, and I think there's a there's a big difference. I think what Tony's gonna be doing in, from his background in baseball. More so than see what they can do, I think Tony's gonna be looking to see what they can't do. And then don't ask him to do it. I think Tony Pena is the kind of guy that's going to also be doing some gut checking. Look at that mental fortitude. We talked about that the other night. You see so many new managers coming in. They want to see what their players can do. And they overlook the fact that you're better off checking out what they cannot do and then don't put them in a position to try to do it. There's a strike to Mags. Mags been scuffing. Average down to 307, 10 homers. 37 driven in. Well, that's why you get off to a tremendous start as Mag did. They have room to drop down and still not look too bad. Mac Dorison right there. So he's in an 0 2 hole, which is something he has been familiar with for the past six or seven ball games. You know you're in a bit of a funk when you're 0 2 before you can turn around. That is so true, unfortunately. The pitcher tells you when you're in a funk. Oh. 
Outfield. Just about straight away. The funny thing is they go over a meeting before they start the series. They go over who's hot, who's not. Go after him, don't go after him. And the count two and two. And it's full. Darrell May, while I was in Japan last year, led the uh, league that he was in in strikeouts. So this guy has definitely learned how to pitch with what he has. Because he's not a pitcher up there throwing 95 miles an hour. What we've seen so far on the gun here is he's getting it up into the high 80s, 88, 89. Well, from our standpoint, I'd much rather see a guy out there who's throwing 95. He had 168 strikeouts last season and 159 innings. There goes Lofton. And there's a ground ball off the glove of Sadler. Everybody's safe. Bases loaded. All right, that was a big distraction that Kenny Lofton caused by the attempted stolen base. He leaves Big Frank hanging over at first, but this ball smoked over to Sadler, but he's on the move. He's thinking about a couple of different things at the same time. Kenny Lofton coming right at him, the ball coming at him. He's going one direction. Looks like just too much going on for Sadler on this play. His head was actually looking one direction, almost like he was looking for the base to go tag it. So sacks packed with socks for Paul Canerco. Paulie at 332, eight homers. He's sitting on 49 RBIs. Paulie three for 10 in the series. Tries to back door him and he misses. And this next pitch is a big pitch in the scheme of things. Well, situational hitting right here for Paul Canerco. One and one to count. And the situational hitting is he doesn't want to hit into the double play. Got to get him a pitch, not a pitcher's pitch, his pitch that he can get a job done. The worst case scenario where he picks up the one. Way out in front. So now he's got to cinch it up and hunker down. Come on, Polly, get two strike hit. This should be. And rack him up. Darrell May made some good pitches on him. Sox threaten can't score after one, two nothing Royals. The first major advance for the fastest treatment of athlete's foot is Lamisil AT. Lamisil AT is the first non prescription medicine proven to kill the fungus with just one week's use. Not even a prescription can beat that. Lotrim and AF and Tanak and still expect you to treat for four weeks. Who's going to do that? When your feet itch and burn, using Lamisil AT one week keeps you athlete's foot free three months. Lamisil AT. There's no better way to cure athlete's foot.
Roundup Fast Act Foam. Its patented formula knocks out weeds in 24 hours. The leading imitator doesn't. New Roundup Fast Act Foam knocks out weeds in 24 hours. I take batting practice. I take infield practice. I take Viagra. Ready to try Viagra for the first time? Ask your doctor if a free sample's right for you. And visit Viagra.com for more information. Step up to the plate and make an appointment to see your doctor. To nothing Kansas City. Right now, let's check out our forward snapshot. This came in last night's ball game. Pop foul. Now block. Paul Canerco goes over, and he's going to try to get a little help as a little girl comes out. <laughs> that was precious. Paulie said later that Durham and Mark Johnson were yelling for her to let her have it. <laughs> he, he also said he thought he heard somebody calling him off from down below. <laughs> Catcher A.J. Hinch making his first appearance in the series. Takes ball one. Hinch at 222. Four homers. He's driven in 16. And we got some email, Feisty. Tell us about it. I love you, Neil. This one just came in from George Himmler from Chicago. Says, Do you think it does something to the mindset of a pitcher when he gets behind in the game early? And if so, is it tough to get back in it? Even when you know you have a team that can get you back in it, like the White Sox. Well, that does make it a little easier, George. And you know your club's probably going to score some runs for you. The only problem here, DJ and I've been talking about lately, the Sox have been having a very, very difficult time with pitchers that they have not seen before. Two and two. Yes, they have. And unfortunately for Todd Ritchie, even though he's an experienced pitcher and he's used to not getting a lot of run support, it starts wearing on you. And he has got the lowest support this year. There's a shot. Right at Aaron Rowan. Got a reminder, fans, at the White Sox Training Centers, the official youth baseball and fast pitch softball camps of the White Sox are back this summer in more than 125 communities across Illinois. So for details on week-long summer camps or private instruction at the new Bull Sox Training Academy in Lyle, just call 630 Play Ball or visit BullSoxAcademy.com. Here's Donnie Sadler. Thanks a bunch. And takes the ball. Donnie at 210. No homers. He's driven in five. Donnie Sattler was picked up big time by Daryl May. That error that he committed. May made the pitches after that. And the right field. That's a can of corn for Mags. I give pitchers credit when they pick you up like that. Especially when you put them in a jam. Bases loaded. One out situation. We'll go in there and say, wait, that way take care of me. Short stop, Nafi Perez. Nafi went out to Mags his first trip. That was a little bunt there, and that's going to be a base hit. A little push bunt by Perez. Uh, it looked like it was going to be harmless at first. But that's the point. You put down the bunt. It's never harmless. If it's not right back to him, they've got to make the play. He tried to hit it a little harder than that, but he still gets the great result. Watch Todd Ritchie. He's going to slide right there. That's all it took to make that a base hit guaranteed. It was probably going to be a tough play for him either way. But that guaranteed it on that little slip. Bunt is a beautiful play. We saw a very prominent bunt last night's 6 1 Sox victory, coming with men on second and third, two out. So I quote Tony Pena said, Boy, that, that was huge. It was definitely unexpected. He did not go in the count 2 0. 
Mark Johnson. But we commented on it last night that it's not a usual bunt situation. Mark Johnson came out and said, you know, I've been struggling. I didn't feel too good. It was hey, it was the best way to get the job done and try and get something going. Well, he was up to that point. He was been hitless. 14 at bats against Jeff Supon. There's a shot. They said, well, they're laying out some lumber here. Fifth hit given up by Todd. Well, you always got a good indicator on how hard the ball is being hit if a guy is missing his spots or if they've got a good game plan against him. And two times LSA has hit the ball hard. He's just got a good game plan because both pitches that he's hit have been away on the outside corner. Beltron takes ball one. Nice block by Sandy. Meanwhile, a count two and zero. Oh. There's a shot. He's making some bad pitches, and they're not missing him. Ball is coming with two out, nobody on, and it's three nothing Royals. Well, six hits here in the second inning that Todd's given up. All of them have been hit hard except for that bunt. So five of the hits right on the sweet spot of the bat. Good job by Kenny Lofton. Getting over and cutting it off, keeping Beltron to a single and Alisea from scoring. Mike Sweeney walked and scored last inning. Popped up, foul, and that'll be souvenir right side. Has some activity. 24 year old right hander Matt Ginter. You know, it doesn't matter how long you've been in the league, how much confidence you have when things are not going well for you, whether you're a hitter, fielder, pitcher, doesn't matter. You're going to start having some doubts. And right now Todd Ritchie's had a tough run. He might start trying to be a little bit more careful than he's used to right? that aggressiveness that he has. And it might take a little while for him to somehow get mentally back to where he was to start this season. Runners at the corners two out one and one the count to Sweeney. Beltran at first 16 for 18 in stolen bases percentage wise one of the best base stealers in the game. But we'll see uh, now he might try it with one and two. Ninety stolen bases in his career and a hundred and one attempts for Beltron. That's true. Stolen sixty three out of his last sixty six. Field spread up, straight up. Hung that one, got away with it. Aaron Rowan. One more crosses the plate. We'll go to the bottom of the second, trailing by three. No one could control them. Who are they? 
these kids rejects from hell? And no one could teach them. Most of my students don't even know what a verb is. All you gotta do is get their attention. But one woman had the courage. Once a Marine, always a Marine. To change their lives. There are no victims in this classroom. Michelle Pfeiffer. If you want to pass, all you have to do is try. Dangerous Minds. Saturday at 1 Eastern on WGN. <laughs> MGD. Pure beer for a pure night out. At Midas, our knowledgeable technicians love cars. It's all we think about. Sad. Midas, we do that. We're here to see how the Dremel Advantage rotary saw outcuts its competition. With its variable speed and powerful motor, it'll blast through materials like wood and tile. Yet smoothly handled plexiglass, laminates, even drywall. The Dremel Advantage. They've got to kill it. The demon will take control of anyone. Before it kills them. You want to possess someone? Come and me. Next Lost World, Saturday at 3 Eastern on WGN. Under O. One of the, G, 54, 54. One of the greatest guys you ever want to meet. Bill Moose Scourin. Calling bingo before the game, and he's going to be signing autographs during the game today. So he's a busy little bee. Tony Graffinino will start things off. Tony hitting at 303, three homers. He's driven in 16. Three, six, and one for Kansas City. 0 1 and 0 for the Sox. Taking the slate of action around the American League. Toronto hosting Tampa Bay, Boston at Detroit. Sweet Lou's Mariners taking on the A's at the Coliseum. Under the lights this evening, Baltimore, New York. Orioles have been giving the Yankees a fit. Cleveland at Minnesota and Anaheim at home against the Texas Rangers. Watch out. Limited slate of action in the National League. Two day games. And one night game. Bottom of the seventh at Synergy Field, Reds leading the Cardinals three to one. Bottom of the fifth in Atlanta, Mets leading the Braves two to one. And tonight, Marlins take on the Phillies at Veterans Stadium. That was a good pitch by May. Jammed him. We're getting a lot of emails in. Since we are, if you're just joining us, we are interactive today. Full count. Here's, and poof, there it is. You want to email us? Email Hawk and DJ, Sox TV at ChicagoSports.com. Hi, pop up. Donnie Sadler. There's a reminder, fans, that this Sunday, Moose Scourin will be signing autographs at the Adler Activity Center located at the center field concourse from 2 to 3 for tickets call 866 Sox game. That's the Moose. He'll be here signing those autographs. There's the Moose. He's signing some autographs this Sunday. Big Bob Grimm, lower right of your screen. As Sandy Alomar takes ball one. Sandy at 294, four homers. He's driven in 17. Not hit that hard. Two down. And here's one that just came in from Kaz Smith from Kansas City. So how do you think the Royals new manager Tony Pena will do? Well, we've been talking about that Kaz quite a bit since the Royals have come into town and we think he's going to do an outstanding job so far what we've seen of him very aggressive manager. He's still looks like feeling out his players getting to know them a bit. But I like what I see of him. 
And this is certainly not, you know, unfortunately in baseball, every time you say something positive about what you think the new manager will do, it's construed as a negative towards the former manager, and that's certainly not what we're trying to imply. I think Tony Muser is a good manager, and I think he will manage again. But I think that Tony, it's that old saying, you know, you can't fire the players. Yeah, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that very often. In a long time, huh? No. Aaron Rowan for the 1-1 one -one count. And no, Kaz, I have not ridden any mules lately. <laughs> must be an old athletic fan. I used to ride Charlie O the mute. Two and one. Yeah, Charlie Finley used to give me $50 to ride that mule around the warning tracks in certain ballparks. $50. That gum right, I rode him. It's a lot of money when you're making 6000 a year, which was the minimum salary. The 3 1. Ball hit deep in the left center field. Way back. They look up. You can put it on the board. Yes. yes. First turn of the season for Aaron Rowan. And it's a 3 1 ball game. Getting on the board with the long ball. Pitches down and he goes down and gets it right on the sweet spot. Drives it. And Aaron Rowan puts us on the board. Here's Royce Clayton takes strike one. Even. <laughs> Royce has had that real big swing going for him. Royce got the new Oscar Gamble look working right now. Get those cornrows out of there. Count hangs at one and two. Hey. Players to try anything when things aren't going right. I think Royce showed up and said, hey, I can sneak somebody. They'll think I'm somebody else. I think that's what he said. Trick somebody, I mean. Two and two. Well, I know everybody comes to spring training with the new look, cut hair, shaved faces. That changes over the year. That's into right field. Mark Quinn. He'll make that play and that'll retire the side. But the homer by Aaron Rowan will go to the third. 3 1 Royals. I don't think we should see each other anymore. It's the rash, isn't it? Listen, the doctor said it's just temporary. No. It's your website. I need more content than that. Our customers expect a lot from a website because at Progressive.com you can get our price for auto insurance and the rates for up to three leading competitors. We want you to save money, even if it's not with us. You could save hundreds. Call Progressive today. I take batting practice. I take infield practice. I take Viagra. Ready to try Viagra for the first time? Ask your doctor if a free sample's right for you. And visit Viagra.com for more information. Step up to the plate and make an appointment to see your doctor. There's never been a better time to get new glasses or sunglasses. Right now at LensCrafters, get a complete pair, frames and lenses, for only $99. 
choose from great looking sunglasses with your prescription or a complete pair of glasses with super scratch resistant Dura lens for only $99. So come into Lens Crafters now. This is one you can't afford to miss. Lens Crafters $99 eyewear event. Hurry, offer ends soon. Well, the Liney Lodge is here at Comiskey Park today as part of Lining Kugel's 135th birthday celebration. Visit Liney.com to find out how you can win a party with the Liney Lodge in your own backyard. Joe Randa will start things off here in the top of the third. Royals lead by a pair. Randa, RBI single in the first. Took something off that curveball. That is a nice paced breaking ball right there. Yeah, you know, Todd throws his curveball generally very tight and very hard. That was a bigger breaker, a lot slower. Two and two. I'm missing by much. It's full. That's into right field. Maglio. And here's a reminder, Sox fans. White Sox are going to be taking on the Expos tomorrow at 7.05, and it's Caribbean night. The first 10,000 fans, 21 and older, will receive a White Sox beach towel courtesy of Jose Cuervo. For tickets, call 866-SOX-GAME. White Sox baseball come ready to play. That's in to left center field. Kenny Lofton for Mark Quinn. Now one for two. He drove in a run in the first. So as Brandon Berger makes his way to the plate, let's pause for station identification. This is WGN Superstation. Along with a feisty one, DJ Darren Jackson, Ken Harrelson from Comiskey Park. Finale of this four game series with Kansas City. Sox have taken two of the first three. There's a strike to Berger. Be careful with this man right here, Berger. Third time being in the big leagues this season. Last year hit 40 home runs in double A. Okay, when we've seen him, he's had some good hacks against us. Yes, he has. 40 homers last year before being called up to the big leagues. Also had 118 RBIs, 300 hitter. Looks like Ty's starting to take a little bit off that curveball now. Which is a good thing to see. Oh, either Nardi Contreras sat him down and said, Look, everything's too hard, or he just figured it out on his own, but it's a nice change. There's a rocket off the glove of Graffinino. That'll be an error on Tony. Day game sometimes has a bit of an effect. See the reaction? All Tony did there was short arm it, gator armed it a bit. But you don't read the ball as well off the bat during the day in any ballpark. A little bit of glare. Sometimes you have a little bit a hair later reaction. They are hitting some bullets. Here's A.J. Hinch. He hit a bullet. Darren Rowan in left field. And here's another email. Barry Swearingen from Ottawa, Kansas. So let's say you guys were the co GMs of the Royals or another small market team. What could you do to make the team competitive in today's game? Well, Barry, if we had that answer, we'd go buy us a small market team. <laughs> You know, the funny thing is about any of the questions like that is the answers are, are there just in the past history of baseball. 
mean, you see so many times in baseball history that other clubs have molded their organizations from what the successful organizations have done. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You still got to have the right people in the right places, or scouting department, you name it. Everything's too complex. I think the new GM of Kansas City, Albert Bear, did a, a good job last year. They had a big problem in the bullpen. They went out and they tried, they identified it. They went out and really strengthened on paper their bullpen, but unfortunately, some of the Guys went down with injuries and they did not have a chance to see it, the fans in Kansas City. But for me, I think today's game, and he's gone. Hook. And that'll do it. We'll go to the bottom of the third. Trailing three to one. A beer owes its life to the brewmaster. Uh, he's the creator and final judge. Every day, the fate of a thousand barrels of beer rests in the brewmaster's hands. By taste alone, he knows if it's Miller beer or an, an imposter in Miller's clothes. The beer that ends up in a can or a bottle is happy to be alive. And the brewmaster said, this beer is good. This beer is ready for Miller time. Geico. 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 Geico has great service. Geico has great service. Our claim representatives, that's right. Are available 24 hours a day. You have a very commercial look. Next, please. Well, hello. Oh, great. A talking gecko. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Roundup Fast Act Foam knocks out weeds in 24 hours. The leading imitator doesn't. New Roundup knocks out weeds in 24 hours. Ice Sport, the scent of exhilaration from Aquavelva, also available in cooling ice blue and musk. A physical attraction that could be fatal. Find them. Next. X. Sunday at 11 Eastern on WGN. You want to make love to my wife? Yeah! I didn't kill her. Consenting adults. Tonight at 8 Eastern on WGN. Some of the delicious food stands here at Comiskey Park as we get set to go to the bottom of the third. It'll be the top of the order for the Sox. Lofton, Durham, and Thomas to face Daryl May. I love onions. And he checks it up. Had a solid single to left field. His first trip. But you know getting back to the small market. General managers that have a limited budget. Pitching is the name of the game. That. Being the first line of defense. And then you have to be able to catch the baseball. As a count, two and one. For me, if I were in a small market, I would get me the strongest bullpen I could. I would continually try to upgrade the bullpen because you can't get starting pitching, good starting pitching. It costs too much money. Well, it starts with a draft. You have to somehow be patient, go out and get the right. Pitchers develop them. Comes through the minor leagues. If you can get a, you know, guys up there soon. That's great. Inside out, that one. Sadler comes up with it. One out. But overall, you know, you got to be patient and develop from within. That's your best result. And usually, long term, that's your going to be your uh, your winning option. That's your way of going. We've seen it work here for the White Sox in the early 90s. It's worked for many teams that way. Well, you gotta you gotta be lucky in the drafts. That's that's where the scouting system scouts is still the heart and soul of baseball. And you gotta be able to draft and be successful, which the scouts, White Sox have been very fortunate for a long time now. They had a terrific scouting system. 
In fact, our first round pick this year, Royce Ring, 21 year old left handed reliever, closer from San Diego State. And here, here he's the first round pick. You very seldom see a reliever get picked in the first round. But the bullpen today is paramount. The game has changed to where 30 years ago, you just didn't have to have that strong a bullpen. First of all, you only had four starters, there were four man rotations. And usually the bullpen was comprised of guys, starters who had failed, so to speak, and they just kept putting them in the bullpen, hoping they would come back. Today, it is not like that at all. If you don't have a good bullpen today, you cannot win. And it's a heck of a lot cheaper to get yourself a, a strong bullpen. As I said, if you're going to have three or four outstanding starting pitchers, you're going to have yourself a tremendous payroll. Well, pitching is the name of the game, especially when it comes to the draft nowadays. There's a shot in the center field. So the one out single by Durham, and here comes Big Frank. Now looking at the draft, first player picked in the draft was a pitcher taken by the Pittsburgh Pirates, Brian Bullington. We look over the history of what the Royals have done, dating back to '97. Every first round pick that they have have had since '97 is a pitcher. We got to load up on those pitchers in the draft. Sox did it this year. And the reason being you take you roll the dice with the pitchers you can always trade pitching for a position player or you cannot always trade a position player for a good pitcher. Frank cannot check it up. Very good pitcher that we took in the draft last season. Done an outstanding job done an A ball. Chris Honnell. Yes, sir. Kankakee. Yes, sir. He got a chance to be a good one. Done an outstanding job. Frank underneath that. Pretty good swing, though. It looks like he is trying to shorten it up. Shorten that one up. Yes, he did. My goodness. Right size, wrong shape. Well, Daryl May is going to make you short it up with that little quick slide step of his. Frank wasn't going to be tricked that time. He was a little too quick, but he was going to cover it. Now the problem is, if he does that little quick slide step and throws you an outstanding changeup, you're in big trouble. Being that quick. Now Hinch wants to have a little chit chat. The 29 year old left hander. And here's another email from Deborah from Mount Holly, North Carolina. It's thanks to Chicago Sports and WGN, my three children, ages three, two, and eight months, and really enjoy watching the games. Now, if I can just get them to clap for the right team and not just whenever someone hits a ball, sign <laughs> four new fans of baseball. All right, Deborah. Uh. Pretty good lead by Ray. Breaking ball, low and outside, one and two. Tries to nip with it, misses, two and two. Says Chuck Merriweather. So a full count. Very rare you do catch Frank on those check swings going all the way. He's the master of stopping that bat. I haven't seen anybody that can check more swings and not have it called on him. A 
is high into left field. Berger going back right up against the fence. He just missed it. So two out, that'll bring up Maglio. And here's another email. As you take another look at Frank Swing. Frank's doing a good job. Posting up on that front leg, hitting against it. Something we've seen a little bit more. And Berger had a little bouncing in that mitt, but holds on to it. Here's one. It says, I'm a 14 year old freshman from Batavia Illinois my question is what advice would you give a youngster on getting to the pros like what steps should he take in his young life thanks Kenny Smalley. I'll tell you what first you've got to have uh, the talent you can't just can't kid yourself if you're not out there working hard at it you've got to you've got to somehow say to yourself all right what is it going to take for me to have the ability to get there it takes a lot of hard work a lot of practice. A lot of time at the at the park or at the baseball field just playing the game enjoying the game of course you hope to have good coaching to work on your fundamentals and it starts especially defensively hitting for as much time as you can in hitting but got a long way to go still. That's low. Kenny Smalley practice practice practice. And we'll say and the more you practice the luckier you get. Well, you have to put your time in playing the game, playing the game, understanding the game, knowing the game. And I think kids today are so more advanced in knowing every aspect of baseball. A lot of competition for you. Three and zero, the count to Mags. And don't ever let anybody count you out. As long as you feel like you can make it, you got a chance. And that's ball four. So two out, two on, and here comes Canerco. Hit into that 6 4 3 double play to end the first inning. That's hammered foul, rope hook. Tell you the new backdrop here in straightaway center field, the improvements that they've made, the changes they've made. There's a big difference in day games here for the hitters. See the ball much, much better out of the pitcher's hand now. And a change up downstairs. We need you. There go the runners. Oh, double steal. And a count two and one. Right away, Ray Ray. Kenny Lofton wanted to steal third base. The ball was hit. This time, Ray. Times a high leg kick, not the slide step. Gets a good jump. And Maglio picking up the, the trail end of that. And you know what Tony Pena is talking to Daryl May about right here. Canerco versus Graffinino. Regardless if that's the go ahead running or not. Ray now very successful. 16 bags. Only been caught twice. I like it. You got to make things happen. That's exactly right. Even with the two outs, 
You got to think two men in scoring position now. Tie this ball game up with just a single. That was a high changeup. Paulie a little too quick a couple of times now on the off speed pitches from May. And when you're swinging the bet well, you're not going to be that quick. You're going to see it and just hold those hands back just a hair longer and keep those pitches fair. And you're not. Get the result you just saw Paulie have on his two swings in this at bat. Full count. Well, if he gets a fastball right here, it's going to be on the inside corner or in unless Darrell May makes a huge mistake. Raffinino on deck has swung the bat very well with runners in scoring position this season. There's a change up away. Here's a reminder fans the White Sox training centers the official youth baseball and fast pitch softball camps of the White Sox are back this summer in more than 125 communities across Illinois for details on week long summer camps or private instruction at the new Bull Sox training academy in Lyle just call 630 play ball and also visit bullsoxacademy.com. So here's Tony Graffinino Tony give yourself a nice birthday present. Tony 30 years old today. Tony G's birthday today. Happy birthday, TG. Takes that change up strike. Three, six, and one for Kansas City. One, three, and one for the Sox. Second time already, the Sox have had the bases loaded. And now, Tony is in a big hole, nothing in two. Yeah, Tony does a pretty good job, though, even with the two strikes of putting the bat on the ball. Tony this season is four for ten with runners in scoring position and two outs. 500 on the hole with runners in scoring position. Sacks packed with socks. There's Durrell. There's Mags. And there's Paul. It was a good effort by Daryl May. He didn't get it. So the count two and two. Pops him up. Alisea. So the Sox threaten, can't score. We trail three to one. I take batting practice. I take infield practice. I take Viagra. Ready to try Viagra for the first time? Ask your doctor if a free sample's right for you. And visit Viagra.com for more information. Step up to the plate and make an appointment to see your doctor. out weeds in 24 hours the leading imitator doesn't new roundup fast act foam knocks out weeds in 24 hours at Midas we're known for total car care brakes air conditioning oil changes there's almost nothing that we can't do impressive Midas we do that hi baby. hi come on in okay 
Who are they? Oh, this is John, Moseem, and Kevin. Well, I'm not going out with just you, silly. If I want to find the right guy, I've got to have options. Hey! Our customers are used to having choices. Because at Progressive.com, you can get our price for auto insurance and the rates for up to three leading competitors. We want you to save money, even if it's not with us. You could save hundreds. Call Progressive today. Ted Danson, Steve Gutenberg, and Tom Selleck. A charming... You love her, don't you? Irresistible Ooh. romantic comedy. I love your mom. Three men and a little lady. Sunday at 1 Eastern on WGN. Seniors Day here at Comiskey Park, where they get to go out after the game and run the bases, weather permitting, hips permitting, ankles permitting, legs permitting. Oh, and won the count to Donnie Sadler. Sadler went out to right field his first trip. And here's another email. And by the way, if you're just tuning in, we are interactive today. This is some Tom Boer from Michigan City, Indiana. Uh, I've heard you guys talk about the best swings in the game in the past, and I agree with your choices, but I never hear the name Paul Molitor. As there is a looper into right. Mags has got him again. One out. I thought he had a great swing. Short, quick, and simple. How do you guys rank him up there? Well, I played with Paulie at two different stints in Toronto and in and in uh Minnesota and he had a beautiful swing but it's more of a rob robotic mechanical swing not just a smooth fluid swing when we talk about beautiful swings we're talking about the, just the pretty swings Perez left field Aaron Paul Molitor the best hitters I've ever had the pleasure of being around he was a great hitter he was a great high fastball hitter he was a smart hitter had a stance Similar to Joe DiMaggio's, very wide, virtually no stride. But where DJ was talking about, Paulie's was more of a staccato type swing as compared to DiMaggio's, who was very graceful and fluid. Paulie had some terrific hands. Here's Alisea, he's two for two with a run scored. Well, Paul Molitor, first time I played with him back in 93 in Toronto I couldn't believe the way he hit and was so successful it was so different. That's why it's such a, a lovely game. They come in all sizes and shapes. And there are all kinds of different stances there is no one way or two ways or ten ways or twenty ways to swing a bat there are thousands of different ways. To swing the bat and be successful. That's why we've talked about it before. In my opinion, the toughest job in uniform today in baseball is a hitting coach. I watched a couple of hitters in my career where I just looked at them in awe, like, I can't believe this guy. One was Paul Mulder, another was Fred Lynn. 3 0 the count to Alisea. Check that, 3 and 1. Lamar Johnson. He's a good hitting coach. Tries to bunt it. It's full. You know, Fred Lynn, I played with him in 90 in San Diego, his last year of playing. And the thing that blew me away about him is he's not a real big man, but had tremendous power. He used a light bat, hit the ball all different directions. It was amazing. So there's ball four. Freddie Lynn, in 1975 as a rookie, won. At that time, he was the only man to ever do it. Won Rookie of the Year, MVP in the same season. And that year played as good a center field for one season as if I have ever seen play. What a tremendous talent he was. Carlos Beltran, he's one for two, an RBI single. The thing about Freddie, too, is he knew how to play the game. Very, very smart, intellectual type player. Wasn't much going to be snuck by him. The 1 0 pitch. 
Little soft ground ball to Durham, sucks it up, throws him out. And that'll do it. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. It's 3 1 Kansas City. Gosh darn it, I must have shrunk him. And Jill, the body, Taylor. What? Oh. Step into the comedy ring. Oh. If you dare. Oh. Home improvement. He's at 7 Eastern on WGN Superstation. Ice Sport. The scent of exhilaration from Aqua Velva. Also available in cooling ice blue and musk. Hey, how you been? Fun girl. I'm great. My friend Molly and I decided to get away for a while. Molly? So we rented from Hertz.com. Who's Molly? It was so easy. Found their best rates and great discounts just for being a AAA member. Yeah. Now we are having so much fun together. Maybe I should go to Hertz.com and drive down too. Sound good to you, Molly? <laughs> New Roundup Fast Act Foam. Its patented formula knocks out weeds in 24 hours. The leading imitator doesn't. New Roundup Fast Act Foam knocks out weeds in 24 hours. You're watching America's number one superstation, WGN. One of our camera operators, Joe Miglio. Birthday boy today. I can't believe he's just 40 years old. Joe, you need some rest. <laughs> Happy birthday, Joe. Happy birthday, Joey. Sandy Alomar. That ball hit deep into left center field. Way back at the fence. Beltran cannot make the play. Sandy's going to give it a shot, and they're going to get it. Well, you never want to make the first or the last out at third base. Brandon Berger did a terrific job backing up the play. He got it in, hit the cutoff man, and from there it was academic. Well, uh, Sandy, the ball actually got in on him just a little bit. Otherwise, it's way back in the seats. Beltron's going to hit the wall just as he's reaching up to try and make the play. Bad timing on his part. That's the reason he doesn't make the play. But Sandy, he's thinking three all the way, and he's out pretty easily. Try to get creative with the slide. Not getting that one. So here's Aaron Rowan. Aaron cranked out his first homer of the season. Gets that change up right off the end of the bat to come back. Two down. And here's another email as we are interacting today. This one just coming in from Eric Scott from Chicago. It says Hawk and DJ, can a team really strike fear in the enemy when his home field is called Minute Maid Park? <laughs> I just saw the new naming of the former Enron Field down in Houston in Minute Maid Park. No, that didn't intimidate me any. I don't know. I'll tell you, as much as of Minute Maid as I have had in my life, I probably built that upper deck out there. Great stuff. 21 to count to Royce. Royce popped up to Mark Quinn in right field his first trip. Well, I said a pretty good pitch hit right there, but again, that big swing. Now you've got Tropicana Field. Now you've got Minute Maid Stadium. Two and two. And on a sad note, we want to send out a 
White Sox hello and hope you're feeling better soon to Shirley Rosenbaum. Wife of Glenn who was with the White Sox for 40 years as he could not check it up. And Shirley hope to see you soon honey. Into the fifth trailing three to one. This portion of White Sox baseball on WGN is brought to you by Viagra. Ask your doctor if Viagra is right for you. I take batting practice. I take infield practice. I take Viagra. Ready to try Viagra for the first time? Ask your doctor if a free sample's right for you. And visit Viagra.com for more information. Step up to the plate and make an appointment to see your doctor. An accommodating leather-trimmed interior. Three spacious rows of seating. Very refined. Introducing the 240 horsepower Pilot, built by Honda. Who's got the closest shave? He does, even on the tough spots. The Remington TCT, the only shaver that first trims the hard to get hairs, then follows with three flexing foils to cut even closer. The Remington TCT, total closeness or your money back. You're watching America's number one superstation, WGN. Top of the fifth inning, three, six, and one for Kansas City, one, four, and one for the Sox. For the Royals, it'll be Sweeney, Randa, and Quinn. Steve Rogers' wife, Emily, and the Twins. Steve Rogers, our strength and conditioning coach with the White Sox. Oh, bullet. Aaron, staying with it, couldn't make the play. Ball gets by him. So Sweeney will pull in the second with a leadoff double. Nineteenth two bagger for Mike. What a great effort by Aaron Rowan. He committed towards it, so he had to keep coming. And that's the key. If you're going to go ahead and commit on this play, which he's doing right there, he can't get caught in between. The hardest thing to do when you're diving for a ball like that, though, is to get in the right position when it's hit right at you. And you see he tries to round it off to where he can backhand catch it. Had no other chance otherwise, and he just came up short. Randa has an RBI single, and he has gone out to right. Pitcher would much rather have you come in and have a ball get by you like that than you sit back and not even attempt to try and make a play that's right at your feet. 2 0. Nice job, Sandy. Very softly. Just caress that ball in front of him with his chest protector. There goes Sweeney. Uncontested right there. He will, if you'll give it to him, he'll take it. That's his third stolen base. Now last season, he was in double figures and stolen bases. Very sneaky. And look at this. Todd Ritchie never even looked at him, so he's off to the races. Of course, Sandy sees the whole play in front of him and says he's not going to waste his time throwing it. Now Durham Clayton halfway. Corners in. And a 2-1 count to Randa. That's popped up in the center field. It's going to be deep enough to get Sweeney home. And it's a 4 1 lead. So Sweeney picking Randa up, giving him the chance to drive in the run. RBI number 33 for Randa. And here's Mark Quinn. He's one for two. And 
And here's another email. This is from Josh Banker from La Habra, California. Says with interleague play restarting this weekend, do you guys like stepping into divisions like the National League East instead of playing all the games in the National League Central? Also, when you guys played, was there one team that you wish you could have played against in interleague play? I enjoy interleague play, Josh Banker. Tell you what, I enjoy it more so jumping into the other divisions like this now. Me too. Changing it up. That keeps it interesting each year, something new. One and two, the count to Quinn. Well, I'm like we're going to be able to see Vladimir Guerrero starting tomorrow, three game series here at Comiskey Park. And then, of course, Bobby Valentine's Mets come to town. We've got some outstanding players there Mike Piazza, Mo Vaughn. Yeah, I really enjoy it. I think it's terrific. There's a hanging breaking ball into center field. Kenny drifting back. Two down. Reminder fans to elect your favorite White Sox and other deserving players to the MLB All Star team using the Clarinix All Star ballot available at all White Sox home games through June 9th. You can also enter to win a trip to the 2002 All Star game that will be played in Milwaukee on July 9th. You can vote online at RadioShack.com, MLB.com, or WhiteSox.com. Brandon Berger, 0 for 2. Count evens at 1. Foul back and a souvenir. Checking some other scores for you. Final from Sky Dome Blue Jays defeat Tampa Bay 5 4. Bottom of the six in Detroit, Boston shutting out the Tigers 3 0. Seattle hitting the top of the first at Oakland and leading the A's 1 0. A little soft ground ball, Clayton. And that'll do it. But the leadoff double comes around to score. Halfway home, 4 1 Kansas City. Uh, operator, I'd like to make a collect call, please. First name Bob. Last name is. We auto baby eats a boy. Hello? Collect call for Mr. Bob. We auto baby eats a boy. Sorry, wrong number. Who's that, dear? Bob, they had a baby. It's a boy. Oh. Don't cheat the phone company. Save money the legal way. Call GEICO. A 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. We're here pitting the Dremel Advantage rotary saw against the competition to see which tool best handles all sawing conditions. Unlike some others, the Dremel Advantage hugs the curve. Its powerful motor blasts through tile and other tough surfaces. Yet, its unique variable speed adjustment handles everything from plexiglass to laminates and drywall. And with 35,000 RPM, it'll slice through materials up to one inch thick. So no matter what you're cutting, you always win. The Dremel Advantage. Drive the power. New Roundup Fast Act Foam knocks out weeds in 24 hours. The leading imitator doesn't. New Roundup knocks out weeds in 24 hours. Our brake pads, mufflers, shocks, and struts come with a lifetime guarantee. Like Fred here, hoping to be thawed out when science cures male pattern baldness. Midas. We do that. This copyright telecast is presented by the authority of the Chicago White Sox and may not be reproduced nor retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Chicago White Sox. It's the bottom of the fifth inning and we got some problems. We trail it by three and the 29-year-old Southpaw Darrell May is pitching well. As we look at 
Some good food here at the ballpark. It'll be the top of the order for the Sox. Lofton, Durham, and Thomas. Kenny is one for two. Takes first pitch strike. Bows it back and the count 0 and 2. Final from the National League. Reds defeat the Cardinals 3 2 at Synergy Field. Bottom of the eighth in Atlanta. Braves leading the Mets 3 2. And later on tonight, the Marlins take on the Phillies at Veterans Stadium. He's gone right there. Let's take a moment right here. The White Sox would like to welcome our newest fan to the world, Allison Rose Johnson, born June 1st. Allison came into this world at 6:21 p.m. last Saturday, weighing in six pounds 13 ounces and stretching 19 and a half inches. Her mom Jennifer, her dad Dan, are exhausted but elated and doing well. And of course, as that pitch popped up by Durham, Alisaia, two gone. But of course, Allison Rose Johnson is the granddaughter of our director, our great director. And great friend Jim Angio. That she is, is gorgeous, yeah, that's Granddad. A, that's a beautiful baby. And congratulations to Jennifer yeah. and Dan. Yes, I'm very happy for all of you. Here's Big Frank. Checks it up and takes the ball. Frank has walked and he's gone out to left. He just missed that one. Back in the third inning. You know what I love about that? That picture of that baby. Every time you ask Jimmy about that baby, oh my goodness, he's all smiles. Oh yeah, he's a happy grandpa, grandpa pa. Here's the 2-0. Three and nothing. DJ, here's an email. Oh no, Brett from Buffalo Grove. Said, did the little girl and boy last night take the White Sox slogan of this year, come ready to play, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Brett. And here's ball four. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. They were definitely ready to play. They brought their mitts and they were ready for action. <laughs> Somebody told them, hey, that's what they said to do. Come ready to play. Here's Mags. He's reached on an arrow. He's walked. He also has picked up a stolen base. Darrell May has walked a tightrope a few times in this ball game and gotten off the hook with some good pitches that he's thrown. Four base on balls he's issued and it's not hurting. Mags out in front. Count even at one. Mags did pick up his fourth stolen base on the trail end of a double steal back in the third. Mags has just been working, working, working to try and get himself right. And he's such an outstanding hitter. Up the middle in the right field, you'd think it would be very easy for him to get back on track, but goes to show you anybody can be in a prolonged slump. Well, you just don't know, as that's on the outside edge of the outside corner, you just don't know. You know, he was dead locked in up until he had that lower back problem for a couple of days, and it was bad. And since that time, he has just not been able to regain his timing. Full count. Well, Maglio came into the season a career 302 hitter. Right now sitting at 305. I mean he was off to such a hot start. I feel it he's gonna cool down, but not like he has. As Frank's off, and that pitch is down. So May walks his fifth batter of this ball game. Well, that's a tough thing to do against anybody, but especially against the Sox. 
this potent offense potentially potent offense I should say so Al Nipper once again out to the mound. Well Daryl May has issued walks two times when it's been two outs and it hasn't hurt him he's made the pitches after that the other time he issued a walk back in the first inning it looked like the Sox were going to catch a break as an error was committed by Sadler bases were loaded one out Paul Canerco ended up hitting to the ending ending double play well, Paulie got a redeemer chance here with a couple guys out there one in scoring position to try and drive in a run or two or three would be nice. So Nipper has a lengthy conversation maybe just give him may a bit of a blow out there. Time to sit back rest for a minute or two and here's something positive. You see Paulie at 330. Eight long balls 49 stakes. Takes that pitch. Looked at it nicely. In his last at bat. Paul walked. That after. Getting some off speed pitches right there for him to hit just a little quick turned on him long and foul. Being a little cautious here, falling behind in the count, two and zero. Oh. Well, Paulie, don't pull that trigger too quick this time around. If he lays one in there, takes a little bit off of it, shoot for that left center field gap, long and hard. Gets underneath it. He had him a pitch. Berger settles underneath it, makes the grab. So Paul Konerka with another opportunity, just can't square it up. Sox are trailing it by three after five. They're neighbors who become friends. Who's your partner? Oh, hey, Eddie Otis. I'm Catherine, but everybody calls me Kay. Friends who become lovers. You want to make love to my wife. But you're afraid you'll get caught. Lovers who become victims. Yeah. And the murder weapon has your prints on it. I didn't kill her. Academy Award winners Kevin Klein and Kevin Spacey. This is how you die. Consenting adults. Tonight at 8 Eastern on WGN. Thanks for the lift. And at a point, it was like my decision was made. I'm out of here. <laughs> Life is best told over a great tasting Miller Lite at a place called Miller Time. I take batting practice. I take infield practice. I take Viagra. Ready to try Viagra for the first time? Ask your doctor if a free sample's right for you. And visit Viagra.com for more information. Step up to the plate and make an appointment to see your doctor. Four, seven, and one for Kansas City. One, four, and one for the Sox here in the top of the sixth inning. It'll be Hinch, Sadler, and Nafi Perez. A.J. Hinch over two, a solid line drive right to Aaron Roy and a strikeout. Takes ball one. And here's another email just came in from Joe Bosick from Darien, Illinois. So I'm a 16 year old catcher. My grandpa, Milt Bosick, played for the White Sox in 1933 and 34, and he watches the White Sox every day. I was also wondering what you thought was more important for a catcher his defensive ability or his ability to call a game? Well, Joe, you just talked to your granddad. He's been there and done that. He'll set you straight. Here's the strike, two and one. Activity down in that Royal Pen. Dan Riker. Not a good swing by AJ.
Beauty on the outside corner. He's gone. Todd's only two strikeouts. Both of them looking. Hinch. This is what Todd has gotten away from. Starting that fastball out off that corner and then running it back and catching it. Hasn't been working for him lately. Gets it right there. Here's Sadler. Takes first pitch strike. Twice he has gone out to Mags. And here's another email. This from Brian Olson from Wagoner, Oklahoma. Just came in. Couldn't check it up. Says, My name is Brian Olson. Can you guys please give me a tip on getting my Little League team to swing the bat? They all stand up there looking to walk. Any tips on the night do? Thanks. Respond to that in a second here. He's gone. Two out. Now well, three pitch strike out there by Todd Ritchie. Coming back into form, but get this get the kids to swing the bats. Well, take them out, throw some extra batting practice to them, get them used to seeing the ball regularly. And you're in charge. You pretty much gotta say, hey, go up there, be aggressive, have some fun. Hitting's the funnest part of baseball when you're swinging the bat. Maybe Perez can do it. I'll tell you what I'd do. I would throw him some extra VP and say, I want you to swing at every pitch. I want you to swing at every pitch. Get them used to swinging the bat. And the more they swing the bat, the more they'll hit the ball as there's a bunt. Ray's got to hurry. Can't do it. Ball got caught up in the webbing of his glove on the Single. shuffle. So the second bunt single for Nafi Perez. Well, the only chance is Ray's got to get it there somehow as quickly as possible. So he decides to go against the bare hand effort, uses the glove, and can't get anything on the little shuttle pass. Here's Alice A's two for two, a run scored, and a base on balls. That's in the center. And a corn for Lofton. And that'll do it. And after five and a half, it's 4 1. Bad guy. Uh, operator, I'd like to make a collect call, please. First name Bob. Last name is. We auto baby pizza boy. Hello. Call for Mr. Bob. We ought to baby eat a boy. Sorry, wrong number. Who's that here? Bob. They had a baby. It's a boy. Oh. Don't cheat the phone company. Save money the legal way. Call Geico. A 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Hey, Jared. Hey. Hey. You good. look good. Thank you. What do you got there? It's a Subway Sweet Onion Chicken Teriyaki. Oh, What are you, off the diet? Jared's off the diet. I'm not off the diet. It's a new low-fat taste from Subway. Introducing great-tasting Subway Selects like a delicious Sweet Onion Chicken Teriyaki and a Red Wine Vinaigrette Club. You really had us going. Subway, eat fresh! Come to Subway today to cast your Pepsi All-Star ballot and enter to win a trip to the 2002 World Series. Grab a collectible baseball cup and vote. Pepsi All-Star Ballot, only at Subway. Hey, how you been? Fun girl. I'm great. My friend Molly and I decided to get away for a while. Molly? So we rented from Hertz.com. It's Molly. It was so easy. We found their best rates, special offers. Oh, yeah. And now we're having so much fun together at the beach. Maybe I should go to Hertz.com and drive down, too. Sound good to you, Molly? <laughs> It's survival or surrender. Feel it! Feel the address on the next town. Andromeda, Sunday at 8 Eastern on WGN. Who are these kids? Rejects from hell? One woman had the courage to change their lives. Dangerous Minds, Saturday at 1 Eastern on WGN. Some of the fans here at Comiskey Park this afternoon hadn't had a whole bunch to cheer about. Royals with two in the first. One in the second, one in the fifth. Sox only run coming in the bottom of the second inning. That was a homer by Aaron Rowan. And while we have a moment, I want to send out a big white Sox hello and hope you're feeling better to Frank Capitelli. 
Retired Chicago policeman. We'll under the weather now at Lutheran General Hospital. Watching in this afternoon, so thank you. Get yourself well. Come on out to the ballpark and come up and say hello. It'll be Graffinino, Alomar, and Rowan. First pitch strike from Dan Riker, 25 year old right hander. Coming off of Darrell May, who went five innings, giving up just that one run, four hits, five walks. So he pitched out of some jams, had the bases loaded twice against him. In two of the first three innings. There's a look at the pass, Royce Clayton. Oscar. Yes, sir. Gary Maddox. Good, quick, hard breaking ball from Rocket and count one and two. Oscar Gamble. Boy, he could turn a 30 30 around down low as Tony's gone. Another breaking pitch. Oh, Rocket sliders as good as they come. Hard, late. Takes a left turn. Very difficult for the hitters to hit that pitch if he locates it where he wants to. He's got that kind of slider that just keeps on digging. Doesn't flatten out on him at all. Here's Sandy. He's one for two. Doubled off the left center field wall. And then was thrown out. Trying to stretch it into a triple. I believe Riker can throw a slider and if he could throw it hard enough, it'd be like a boomerang come right back to him. It's pretty good fastball. He's throwing much better this season. We saw him last year when he had a little arm problem. When he's healthy, he's nasty. Well, Riker used to be in a starter and has done a very strong job out of the bullpen for the Royals. Second time the Sox are seeing him in this series. Three and one to count. Record started that string of pitchers being drafted by the Royals back in 97, the first round draft choice of the Royals. It's full. <laughs> Tops a foul. And once again, a reminder we are interactive this afternoon, so jump on and email us. And email Hawk and DJ Sox TV at chicagosports.com. We're getting a whole bunch of them. We're not going to be able to get them all in, but try to pick out some as there's that breaking ball. Are well, you doing something when you're striking Sandy Alomar out? That's just the eight. Eighth time that he struck out on the season. That's with 112 at bats. And it's that hard slider of Reichert's. The perfect slider does not have to be a big breaker. Perfect slider is really a short breaker with a little tilt on it. And then you got the other extreme, the cut fastball. Mariano Rivera. On the outside corner, one and one. Uh, I'll tell you what, Mariano Rivera started doing in the last few years is throwing that cutter into right handers. Normally you'd want it away, but he starts it in off the inside corner and barrels it on the inside part of it, squares through that one. Tell you when you're right handed hitter you do not expect that and he's throwing that now you get guys jumping back thinking it's a ball inside and cuts back to that inside corner. He also is throwing that two seam fastball that'll run in on you so you got a cutter. 
like Rivera, there's a few guys that throw decent cutters. You're in trouble. Cannot check it out. So he strikes out the side. All on that slider. We'll go to the seventh trailing by three. I take batting practice. I take infield practice. I take Viagra. Ready to try Viagra for the first time? Ask your doctor if a free sample's right for you. And visit Viagra.com for more information. Step up to the plate and make an appointment to see your doctor. Ice Sport. The scent of exhilaration from Aquavelva. Also available in cooling ice blue and musk. We're here to see how the Dremel Advantage Rotary Saw outcuts its competition. With its variable speed and powerful motor, it'll blast through materials like wood and tile. Yet smoothly handled plexiglass, laminates, even drywall. The Dremel Advantage. If you have osteoarthritis, there's reason to celebrate. It's Celebrex. Celebrate, celebrate, come on and celebrate. Celebrex targets only the COX-2 enzyme, a key source of arthritis pain. Celebrex relieves arthritis pain plus inflammation and stiffness, too. Woo! Celebrate, celebrate, come on and celebrate. Celebrex should not be taken if you've had aspirin-sensitive asthma or allergic reactions due to aspirin or other arthritis medicines or certain drugs called sulfonamides. In rare cases, serious stomach problems such as bleeding can occur without warning. Tell your doctor if you have kidney or liver problems. Celebrate, celebrate. Powerful 24-hour relief from osteoarthritis pain, inflammation, and stiffness. Ask your doctor about prescription Celebrex. Celebrate, celebrate. Come on and celebrate. First pitch to Carlos Beltran, a changeup, and he hit it hard. Right size, wrong shape. A duck hook. Four, eight, and one for Kansas City, one, four, and one for the Sox. Beltran, one for three, an RBI single in the second. So once again, the Sox had a pitcher that they have not seen hardly at all. And couldn't do anything with it. That's been amazing this year. That sequence. Foul. One and two. Well, it's definitely became a uh, routine for the White Sox, and to where they face a guy, they don't have very good offensive luck against him. Even with opportunities out there in front of them, they've made the pitches against him regularly this year to to pretty much stay out of trouble. Two and two. It's hard to explain. Nobody has the answer, the definitive answer. If you did, you could share it with them and get them out of it. But it, you'd think that a lot of the guys that hit the hill against us this season, Sox rookies and other guys that Sox had not seen, that they would have handled pretty easily. And that's not the way it went. Her ball full count. I know in Japan they used to reshuffle their staffs over there regularly. Play each other so much over there. If somebody you got used to, they get them out of this in my legs and call up a kid you haven't seen. So they have that philosophy over there. They don't want you to get used to the pitching. Just call somebody up you don't know, some young kid, let them have a start or two. Get him back out and get the veteran back in. Don't let those hitters get comfortable. He's gone. Beauty. Right on the inside corner. Activity, Bobby Howard. 
There's a reminder, folks, that this that the White Sox are going to be facing the front the Expos tomorrow at 7:05, and it's Caribbean night. So put on your grass skirts and celebrate island life at the ballpark with tailgating, live calypso music, steel drum bands, in-game fun, and post-game fireworks. Plus, the first 10,000 fans, 21 and older, receive a beach towel from Jose Cuervo. Want to know the count to Mike Sweeney? Sweeney has walked, scored, gone out to left, and he has doubled. Stolen the base and scored again. Doing that fastball by him upstairs. You know, Todd Ritchie this season has received 3.86 of run support. Not a whole lot. I mentioned earlier in the year is where it hurt him. Lately he's been giving up some runs, but earlier in the year he kept us in the game. They didn't give him anything. Matthew. Only getting 3.86. You got an ERA of 4.37. Those numbers don't work out too well. well the ERA at 4.37 has really been in his last five, six starts where he's taken the losses. Yeah. Other than that, everything before, nothing had been over three. Back through the middle. So Sweeney two for three. And as Joe Randa comes up, let's pause for station identification. This is WGN Superstation. On with Darren Jackson, Ken Harrelson from. Beautiful Comiskey Park in the beautiful city of Chicago, Illinois. Randa, one for two, an RBI single, also a sacrifice fly. How to play right side. And here's another email that just came in from T.W. Hickson from Panama Beach, Florida, also the home of Steve Hathaway. So talking DJ, I was looking over some of the Sox pitching stats and noticed that Rocky Biddle had only worked 12 innings. What do you guys think about his future? I think Bill could be contributed a lot more if he was given more appearances. Well, T.W. Hickson, he was rehabbing and coming off surgery. There goes Sweeney. Fandy with a throw. He's gone. Fandy just fired that ball down there, stood straight up, planted his feet, and a missile. But well, he knew he had he was going to get him with a good throw. Not a real good jump right there by Sweeney. Took his time, made sure of the good throw, and grabbed some bench. There's a strike one and two. T.W. Hickson, you're right. When Rocky Bill was healthy, he's got as good a stuff as anybody on the staff. Good live movement on his fastball and a real good curve. He's gone. Fastball outside corner. Fifth strikeout. The tied seventh inning stretch. We trail it by three. Filtered MGD. Pure beer for a pure night out. The Talons are gone. Now, what on earth is next? What was it? The final stand. The final mission. This is our world, human. I'm yours. Of Earth Final Conflict. Sunday at 9 Eastern on WGN. Time to check out our Miller Lite Major League scoreboard, a limited slate of action. There you see 5 4 Jays over the D Rays up at Sky Dome. Austin shutting out Detroit 4 0 at Comerica Park. Second inning at the Coliseum, 1 1. Mariners and the A's. Later on, Baltimore, New York, Cleveland, and Minnesota, and Texas at Anaheim. 3 2, the Reds beat the Cards at Synergy Field. 
Mets took it on the chin once again from the Braves down in Atlanta 3 2 and the only other National League game scheduled for today tonight. Marlins take on the Phillies at Veterans Stadium. We got some work to do. Feisty got to get some base runners. 4 1 Royals. Jose Valentin has come out to hit for Royce Clayton. Royce was over 2. Well, we need some offense. And Dan Riker came in and struck out the side last inning. Royce Clayton being a right hander. We'll get the switch hitting Valentin in there. Takes the butt, takes the strike. And a count 0 and 2. Pretty good rip by Hose. Underneath. Well, everybody just keeps wondering what's it going to take for these White Sox hitters to constantly get out there and get it done. Nobody has the answer. Looks so upper right side. Sweeney, Rocket, right where he should be, and that's out number one. Reminder fans this Sunday is Willy Wonka's Kids Day presented by Laffy Taffy at this game and select Sunday home games during the season fans can collect autographs pregame kids can run the bases postgame and the kids tickets purchased at any Comiskey Park ticket window on the day of the game are just a dollar. So we go back to the top of the order Kenny Lofton's one for three. There's a strike. When he won the count. You, uh, you had some tough times when you were hitting. Did you ever just back off? Just take some time and say, you know what, I'm not hitting. I'm taking this time off. I'll tell you the toughest thing, in my opinion to do when you're hitting and you're going bad. I think and it took me a long time to learn it. it took me six years to learn it. I think you've got to give up some at bats. I really believe that I think you got to go up there and you got to know as you check out the shower out there in left field. You got to have a plan of some sort. I don't care. That old saying, a bad idea is better than no idea at all. And so many guys, when they get in the slumps, they're trying to protect the plate. They're trying to cover the whole plate as there's a ground ball, Sweeney. Biker. Two down. And especially against a good pitcher. And finally, I just made up my mind that I was going to go up there and I was going to give up some at bats if I had to. I was going to look in one zone, middle in. And if I didn't get it, if he hit the middle out three pitches, I'd just grab some bench. But yet I saw the ball and I started looking at the ball longer instead of seeing it 54 55 feet, which is what most guys do when they're in a funk. I started, I worked it back to where I was seeing it 56 57 feet. And it gave me some sense of control. I guess that was the whole essence of the, of the concept. It gave me some sense of control up there as Ray tries to bunt it and fouls it off. What did you do? Well, you know, if it was a prolonged funk, sometimes I, I worked so hard, so many extra swings, extra swings, extra swings, and if that didn't work, I just backed off. Say, so, you know what? I got to take a breather. I'm not hitting today. I do that for a day, clear my mind, and start over. But you got to do something, Sweeney. All three plays, three to one. 
Another easy inning for Riker. We're into the eighth. In trouble. This portion of White Sox baseball on WGN is brought to you by Honda. See your Honda dealer today to learn more about the great value Honda has to offer. Introducing the 240 horsepower four-wheel drive pilot built by Honda. Slower traffic. Please keep to the right. I take batting practice. I take infield practice. I take Viagra. Ready to try Viagra for the first time? Ask your doctor if a free sample's right for you and visit Viagra.com for more information. Step up to the plate and make an appointment to see your doctor. New Roundup Fast Ag Foam knocks out weeds in 24 hours. The leading imitator doesn't. New Roundup knocks out weeds in 24 hours. You're watching America's number one superstation, WGN. Before we start the top of the eighth inning, let's take a second, pause, and check out what's coming your way right here with WGN. He will risk everything any man could want for a chance at the one thing no man should have, his neighbor's wife. Kevin Klein, Kevin Spacey, consenting adults. Tonight at 8 Eastern on WGN Superstation. All right, now let's take a look at our Toyota game summary as the Sox trailer by three. Darryl May went five innings, one run, two strikeouts. Randa, a couple of RBIs. Aaron Rowan hit his first home run of the season. Bobby Howry on for Todd Ritchie. First hitter is Mark Quinn. Breaking ball pops him up. Daffinino. Jose Valentin remains in the ball game at short. But one pitch, one out. Bring up Berger. Brandon, 0 for 3 this afternoon. Was called up yesterday as Knobloch went on the DL. Berger, not a youngster. He's 27 years old. Good strike on the outside corner. But I, I, I love when you've got guys a little bit older in age. They get an opportunity to put some time in, in the minor leagues and you know you start having some doubts and then you finally get that chance. There's a blueprint. 0 and 2. Now that's the reason you get a lot of guys that are 27, 28, 29, even 30 years old in the minor leagues today. They feel like they still have a chance. And as long as they feel like that, you can't write them off. Somebody is liable to get with them, put the right thought processor in their mind, and all of a sudden they take off and become a good hitter. Well, my favorite is the guys that have never even had an opportunity, yet they spend years in the minor leagues and they put decent numbers up, and then finally something happens, they catch a break, and they take advantage of it. You know that, uh, that fairy tale tell story. You're just withering away in the minor leagues, thinking, ah, I just enjoy the life down there. I'm playing baseball. All of a sudden, your dream comes true. Somebody tells you, "Come here, young man. Guess what? They want you in the bigs." The one-two. Good pitch by Bobby. Double-barreled activity for the Sox. Kelly Wunsch, Antonio Osuna. And here's an email that just came in. Said, since the start of interleague play, do you think that the Sox and Cubs match up as the best interleague rivalry in baseball? Or is it, say, the Mets or Yankees or Oakland versus San Francisco? Andrew from Phoenix. 
Well, I don't know, Andrew. It's hard to say which one is the best rivalry, but I don't see how I can get any better than the Sox and the Cubs. I'm sure the Yankees and the Mets are comparable. Up the middle, Valentin, ball comes up on him. That should be a base hit. D6, air six. And it's going to be an error. Ball's hit towards the end of the bat. Good pitch by Howry. And that play right there just eats Valentin up. Not a routine play. You're going to have to turn and wheel and throw a strike as Berger's digging down the line. Now the ball came up on him. If it hadn't come up, it would have been an error. But it is anyway. And here's A.J. Hinch. He's 0 for 3. Lined hard to left and struck out twice. Michael Tucker goes in for Brandon Berger. Almost threw it away. Good play by Canerco. Strike. Oh, and one. There's a drive hooking foul off the bat of Hinch. Oh, and two count. Tough day for Hinch. Todd Ritchie made some good pitches on him, rung him up twice looking. And now sitting there with an 0 2 count. Got him. Good running fastball in on the hands. Three straight for A.J. Hinch. Good life on that fastball from Bobby Howery. That's going to bring up Donnie Sadler. Sadler, he's over three, applied to right twice, and struck out swinging on three pitches back in the sixth off of Richie. Tucker. Who has 11 stolen bases? Been caught twice. Got to keep an eye on him. As the Kansas City Royals, the running Kansas City Royals, we should call them. Good fastball. Hey, if you're not going to be a power team, which the Royals have 40 home runs on the season, you better have something going your way, and more likely you're going to use that speed more often. And relying on the long ball. Now you don't have to have blazing speed to be a good base dealer. But you better have a good feel for it. You better have a good sense of timing. Got a reminder, folks, to elect your favorite White Sox and other deserving players the MLB All Star team using the Clarinix All Star ballot available to all White Sox home games through June 9th. You can also enter to win a trip to the 2002 All Star game in Milwaukee on July 9th. You can vote online at radioshack.com, MLB.com, and WhiteSox.com. Swinging through it, Bobby Howard gets Donnie Sadler up high. Oh, Howard comes on. Faces four hitters, strikes out two of them. It's TV's funniest family comedy. I'm the tool man, I can fix anything. Home Improvement, weekdays at 7 Eastern on WGN Superstation. I don't think we should see each other anymore. 
It's the rash, isn't it? Listen, the doctor said it's just temporary. No. It's your website. I need more content than that. Hey! Our customers expect a lot from a website. Because at Progressive.com, you can get our price for auto insurance and the rates for up to three leading competitors. We want you to save money, even if it's not with us. You could save hundreds. Call Progressive today. out weeds in 24 hours. The leading imitator doesn't. New Roundup Fast Act Foam knocks out weeds in 24 hours. Oh, when a problem comes along, you must whip it before the cream sets out too long. You must whip it when something's going wrong. You must whip it. Now whip it into shape. Shape it up. Get straight. Go forward. Detected. It's not too late to whip it. Whip it good. Sunday, Chicago swings out to Seattle to try to slow down Ichiro and the AL West champion Mariners. Sunday at 4.30 Eastern on WGN. Big Frank Thomas will lead off the bottom of the eighth inning. We need three to tie. And if you're scoring along with us, change that arrow on Jose Valentin to a base hit for Brandon Berger. 4 10 and 1 for the Royals, 1 4 and 1 as Michael Tucker remains in the ballgame in left field for Burke. Frank 0 for 1 with a couple of walks today. Makes that slider, strike on the outside edge. I think that call is the right call. That was a hit to me for Berger. That's low. It should be a can of corn for Beltron. Oh, one out. And here's something for all of you who live in the Chicago area. Here's an email from Karen Noble from Lyle. Says, my son, who is eight years old, has been taking hitting lessons from the White Sox Academy in Lyle. I just wanted to say how beautiful the facility is and how much he has learned. He absolutely loves it and can't wait for the summer camp. His instructor is Matt Ingram, who has taught him so much. Mags take strike one. The facility has so much to offer, and I'm glad that the word is getting out to people who can truly benefit from it. Our children who love the game. That is a beautiful facility out there, Karen, as you know. If you know Chicago area, out in Lyle, the Bulls, White Sox training facility. It's magnificent. Tim Rappé and his staff do a wonderful job. You know that they do. I was involved in 99 when I was still playing and doing some of the clinics with them here at the stadium. And they do a great job with kids. Max fighting that <laughs> slider off. And if you're interested in being involved in some of those clinics and those lessons, don't forget the number is 630 play ball. All right, there's a base hit. There's a good piece of woodwork right there by Mags. Well, that swing there from Maglio was almost a do or die swing. Watch out, he's just going to kind of punch at it. Kind of swing off. That is something we haven't seen from Mags in a while, where he's actually trying to go that way. He just punched down through it. That's all he wanted was a pitch that they could do that with, and he finally got one, especially after that pitch before that really unattractive swing. Here's Kaneko. Well, he 0 for 2 with a base on balls. There's a shot by Sadler. 
Mags now is going to make the turn. Tucker with the throw, safe. And Pauly in the second, safe. Now this ball is just scalded off of the bat of Paul Konerko. Sadler just can't react. Mentioned earlier, day games a little tougher to pick the ball off the bat immediately when it's hit. Mags a little hesitation then says, I gotta go. Just gets in there. Sadler leaves the area trying to get that trail runner as Konerko gonna see that the throw went into third and take advantage of it and end up at second. That's good. Good base running on Konerko's part. Watching, he's got the whole play in front of him. And he took advantage of it. So here's Graffanino. Tony 0 for 3 this afternoon. Gets that fastball and flips it back to foul. That should be a single for Canerco, and he went to second base on the throw. That's the way they'll score it. Way guys, get those rally caps going. Oh, to the count. Right here, if you're Tony Graffinino, you get an 0 2 count on a guy that has a slider like Reichert. The best chance you have, as you say, just what you were talking about earlier, is you got to just force yourself, you got to jam yourself. Think about hitting it to the right side off the knuckles. Look at this. Sweetness. They're going to hold Conerco at third as Mag scores. Now Tony on his way to second base. Safe. Good base running this inning by the Sox. Well, Graffinino taking a big chance as the throw from Quinn overshoots everybody. As he just look at that little punch, touch swing by Graffinino as a nasty slider down and away. He's not trying to do anything. We'll put the bat on the ball and look what happens. Drives in the run. Quinn, he's going to airmail this over the cutoff man. It's a bullet. Hinch out in front, but Graffinino reading it right off the bat. Never hesitates and into second base just under the tag. And Ted Barrett, second base umpire, all over that play. So Riker will depart. Corey Bailey coming on, and we'll be back. Like the ability to project electricity from your own body or to transform into an impenetrable mass and then become as intangible as vapor. How do you explain such a defiance of gravity or the power to peer into the minds of others and alter their sense of reality? Welcome to Mutant X. Go, go, go. Resistance is a Mutant X takes you to a world where genetic science has cracked the code to unleashing the boundaries of human capability. You told me she was special. You didn't tell me how special. A world where a sinister government agency vows to hunt down these mutant renegades. This is war. I'm a warrior. Mutant X features the good, the bad, and the beautiful. She is so hot, she can make your eyes bleed. A show that has it all. A cast of charismatic characters. Normal people don't want superpowered freaks next door. And visually stunning action adventure. This story just won't go away. Welcome to Mutant X. Sunday at 7 Eastern on WGN. Sandy Alomar, first hitter to face Bailey. As Nafi Perez right over the top. 
Canerco scores. We got ourselves a 4 3 ball game. This is the third time that the Sox are seeing Bailey in this series. See his numbers. Bailey's got a tremendous curveball to go along with a good cut fastball. Sandy Alomar not wasting any time putting the bat on the ball and picking up that runner at third base. It appears now that Aaron Rowan's being called back and Jeff Leifer coming on out to face the hard throwing right hander. Aaron was one for three, his first homer of the season, coming back in the second inning. If Lafer had an RBI single in yesterday's ball game. Career is a pinch hitter, 238, 5 for 21. But this season, one for one. 4 10 and 1 for Kansas City, 3 7 and 1 for the Sox. Malif Media lays off that quick breaking curveball from Bailey. He's been pitching well. And that he has. Got a good arm and that curveball. We saw some of the swings that were taken against it yesterday. Hitters have a little trouble picking it up. Hard and late breaking. He's got a count. Jose Valentino on deck. There. On the outside edge. A cutter of Bailey's. Actually, had a little life on it, running away from Leifer. There you go. He falls behind 3 0, comes back and aces it. We're into the ninth, trailing by one. Life is best told over a great tasting Miller Lite at a place called Miller Time. I, I just want to give you your wallet back, sir. Ice Sport, the scent of exhilaration from Aqua Velva, also available in cooling ice blue and musk. I take batting practice. Take infield practice. I take Viagra. Ready to try Viagra for the first time? Ask your doctor if a free sample is right for you and visit Viagra.com for more information. Step up to the plate and make an appointment to see your doctor. 
At Midas, our knowledgeable technicians love cars. It's all we think about. Sad. Midas, we do that. Trapped on a remote outpost. They're coming, Surrounded by a relentless enemy. They're getting closer. Four walls, a few weapons. Feel the entrance! And an unlikely ally will mean the difference. We got the power. Between survival and surrender. My fight's not over until I say it is. On the next. Now! Andromeda. Sunday at 8 Eastern on WGN. Top of the ninth, top of the order for Kansas City as they lead it four to three. Davey Perez, two for four, two bunt singles, and a run scored in this game. Alisay on deck and Beltron in the hole. That's popped up. Graffinino. Well, two pitches, one out. And uh, Jeff Leifer remains in the ballgame in left field for Aaron Rowan. So here's the second sacker, Luis Alisea. He's two for three. He also has scored a one. Alisea hit the ball hard his first two times up, and then drew a walk back in the fourth. Takes ball one. Make your plans to be with us starting tomorrow night right here at Comiskey Park. First of a three game set with the Montreal Expos. Tomorrow night, Danny Wright against Tony Armas Jr. And if you can't make it to the park, that game will be over Fox Sports Net Plus. On Saturday, John Garland against Tomo Oka. And that game will be over WGN. On Sunday, Mark Burley against Carl Pavano. That's off the end of the bat in the right field. Two down. And that Sunday game will be over Fox Sports Net. And after that series, it'll be the Metropolitans. Bobby Valentine coming to town Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Also, a, a change in that Wednesday night game, in case you're coming to that game. On your schedules, that says a 7.05 start is a move that to a 6.05 start against the Mets. Good slider right there from Howard. Good spot. Digging down and in. Beltron, one for four, and RBI in the second. Good pitch. Ate him up inside. Quick inning for Howry. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth. Schedule hitters are Valentin, Lofton, and Durham. Well, hello. Oh, great. A talking gecko. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. A typical car insurance agent is on the job during regular business hours. On the other hand, Geico insurance professionals are on the job 24 hours a day. Geico. A 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. We're here pitting the Dremel Advantage rotary saw against the competition to see which tool best handles all sawing conditions. Unlike some others, the Dremel Advantage hugs the curve. Its powerful motor blasts through tile and other tough surfaces. Yet its unique variable speed adjustment handles everything from plexiglass to laminates and drywall. And with 35,000 RPM, it'll slice through materials up to one inch thick. So no matter what you're cutting, you always win. The Dremel Advantage. Drive the power. Hey, how you been? Fun girl. I'm great. My friend Molly and I decided to get away for a while. Molly? So we rented from Hertz.com. Who's Molly? It was so easy. Found their best rates and great discounts just for being a AAA member. Yeah. Now we are having so much fun together. Maybe I should go to Hertz.com and drive down too. Sound good to you, Molly? 
Bottom of the ninth inning, we got three outs to try to get one run or two to win. And a pitching change. 37 year old veteran right hander Roberto Hernandez. Feisty. Let's see what Roberto has done. Converted nine saves and 10 opportunities, 13 strikeouts against two walks in 13 and third innings. Hernandez. See, the Sox have had opportunities in this ball game right there. Bases were loaded. Paul Konerko ends up hitting it to the double play again. An opportunity with runners in scoring position. Graffinino pops up. Paul Konerko, one more chance in the fifth inning. He just misses one, gets underneath it, and flies out to Berger and left. There have been a lot of runners out there, and the pitches were made. Sox getting a little too big a couple of times, not coming through. That's the key. The pitches were made when they were needed. So Hernandez, a big man, 6'4, 250 pounds. He'll face Jose Valentin, Kenny Lofton, and Ray Durham. Hernandez, 303 saves in his career, 161 of those coming in the Sox uniform. Get back in there. Get out of here. Hinch. Couldn't get there. Looks like it might have hit the net, hit the screen back there. Give him a little too much trouble to handle it. I just tell by his reaction. He set up, set up, set up, and that's off to the left. Can't tell from that shot, but might have nicked that net. Might have just misplayed it. Yeah, I think he. Overran it just a little bit to his right. That split her down. So the count one and one to Jose. Jose has not enjoyed facing Roberto. Nine at bats, six strikeouts. And the count two and one. Now Jose, not unlike a lot of hitters, is much better off when he's just got to protect in and out. Against Hernandez, you got to protect up and down. And a lot of guys have problems with that. You got to look for well, Fernandez. He's got that 95 mile an hour fastball he can throw up, and he's got that splitter that's really good downstairs. And the count three and one. Oh, Roberto was in a jam the other day. Had the bases loaded. Sox an opportunity to tie things up and getting the double play to end the game. Full count to Valentin. All four bases. Good old fashioned hardball. So one out, and here's Kenny. Lofton, one for four, had a solid single to left field in the first inning. Takes ball one. Sadler to cut the grass at third. Sweeney. He's in at first. Outfield well around to the left. Chopper two hopper. Alisea.
So we're down to our last out in Ray Durham. Ray's one for three. Ray's got to remember he does not have to try and turn on Roberto. He's got good power the other direction if he's thinking in that fashion. Took that pitch nicely. One for six against Hernandez. Well, I tell you, Mark Quinn and right field is really shallow in this situation. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. No. The no double situation. The 2 1. Ray just coming off the ball. Which is easy to do against Hernandez. Off the end of the bat, Perez with a bare hand, the gun, not in time. So Ray beats it out. Tremendous play by Perez at shortstop. This ball's got all kinds of spin on it. He bare hands it and delivers the throw, but Ray, head first, just beats the throw. So we got some power against some power right here. Hernandez against the big hurt. Frank Thomas. Frank over two with two walks today. Takes ball one. One time big man. Give him a thrill. Bound to happen sooner or later. Why not right here. Not a good swing. One and one. Sox have yet the season to come back late and win a ball game. Almost unbelievable. This being the 60th game. Frank looking for it, got it. And snap hooks it. A one and two. Good lead by Durham. And that's a base hit to right. Ray will make the turn. He's in the third as Quinn gets it back in. So runners at the corners. And here comes Maglio. Last time Roberto Hernandez took the hill. Two games back. Big Frank shoots that pass. Mike Sweeney holding Ray Durham on. Good job by Frank with a couple of strikes. That gum right. Well, last time they faced Hernandez, he was out there and gave up three base hits in this inning of work, did not allow a run. They were singles. And he's done it again in just his second inning of work. He's allowed five hits and yet has not issued a run given up. Here's Mags, reached on an error, walked twice, singled, and scored. You got to shorten up on him, Mags. Just like that last base hit you had. Last inning. Oh 
And the count 0 and 2. Oh, it looked like he was trying to take an inside pitch and muscle it into right field. But a wild pitch. The chopper, Alisay has got it. And this game is over. So the Royals come back. They win a couple of one run games. They win game two, three to two. They win game four, four to three. They split the series. And we'll be back to wrap it up. For the first time, ask your doctor if a free sample is right for you and visit Viagra.com for more information. Step up to the plate and make an appointment to see your doctor. Well, we're back here at the ballpark. The Sox just unable to pull out another close one. And unfortunately, Roberto Hernandez made the pitch as hot when he had to. And uh, Mags couldn't fight that pitch off into right field. He tried to. He tried to fight that inside fastball off. Tried to stay inside of it and just couldn't do anything with it. But you got a, you know, you got a premier closer out there in Roberto Hernandez. He's now 10 for 11 this season, 304 saves in his career, and the Sox tried to come back. At least, you know, we mentioned that the Sox this season have not come back from the seventh inning on to win a ball game, and this is their 60th game. That's almost an incredible stat with an offense as potent as the Sox offense is. So that being the case, I don't know, you know, DJ, it's a mindset. 2000 this club thought they could come back any time and they did many many times this year evidently they think they can't and they're not well you know lately they've given some charges they've put some runs on the board from the eighth inning and ninth inning but they haven't put the big run across and that's unfortunate they need to come come across with a big hit we keep waiting for that one guy to do it and maybe that'll open up the floodgates it just hasn't happened yet they're gonna keep trying they're gonna keep showing up and they're gonna keep putting a good effort out there and uh, you know something's got to give sooner or later and we're hoping it's might be tomorrow well, let's check out our Miller Genuine Draft play of the game. This coming in the first inning, Joe Randa to play against Todd Ritchie. Todd settled down after giving up two in the first, one in the third. As Randa knocks in Luis Alisea, who had singled. That made it a one-run ball game. They came back with one, I should say, in the second inning. But the final totals in the finale of this four-game set, for Kansas City, four runs, ten hits, one error, they left seven. For the Sox, three runs, nine hits, one error, they left ten. Darrell May the winner. He is one in three on the season. Richie takes the loss. He is three and eight. Roberto Hernandez with his tenth save. And a reminder, our next White Sox telecast will be Saturday night when the Montreal Expos take on the Sox from Comiskey Park. Our broadcast begins at 6 p.m. right here with WGN TV. So for my partner, DJ, Darren Jackson, our director, Jim Angio, our producer, John Walker, and this is the Hawk Ken Harrelson. So long, everybody. Chicago White Sox baseball brought to you by MGD cold filtered for a pure beer and a pure night out pure MGD your local Ford store quality people quality products Pepsi the joy of Pepsi and by Toyota get the feeling You're watching America's number one superstation, WGN.